Welcome back to Tribe Talk, presented by Truist. This is Jay Colley, and with us, the head football coach at William & Mary, Mike London, fresh off a 40-14 to victory over Towson this past weekend at Zabel Stadium. Uh, coach, congratulations on the win. Thanks, Jay. It was, uh, it was a great win, great opportunity for us to experience all three phases playing well from start to finish, and, and that's the goal as we start playing, you know, to continue to get better, start games fast, Finish game strong, and uh, I thought we did that, uh, you know, this past game. So I guess it goes without saying. Uh, my follow-up question was going to be best performance of the year? I, I would say it's probably the most complete game from start to finish. You know, whenever, whenever you get, you know, you drive for touchdowns, you get explosive plays, you get six turnovers. I mean, obviously that's, uh, you know, those, those, those are good things. You said you wanted to get your running backs the football and put them in positions to succeed. Every running back that you played on Saturday afternoon had a good game, very frankly. Yeah, there was a, a level of success in terms of the O-line providing the, the, the run lanes and the opportunities for the skill set of the running backs to take advantage of. You know, I thought Donovan Lester did a great job with downhill and jump cutting. Bronson Yoder, direct snap, Wildcat formation, uh, finding creases, um, you know, Malachi Emo, you know, doing a great job in terms of getting out of space and then outrunning the defenders. Drayshawn Kendricks, you know, showing his skill set and what he does, catching the ball and running the ball. So, you know, it, it was an opportunity to, to, to kind of let the running backs use their skill, but also be true to the, the run game and, and what we're all about. So that was, it was, it was a positive thing to watch. Is it a special skill set? jumping to defense that Nate Lynn has that is able to tackle and strip the ball at the same time, or is it instinctive for Nate? It, it's instinctive, but you got to want to do it. And you got to know that when the appropriate time applies to it, to do it. And you look at, at any level, you know, high school, college, obviously the NFL, your ability to, to make the big play is not only sack the quarterback, but to get the ball as well. And so that's being taught. Uh, Nate does a great job of, of, of watching it, seeing it, demonstrating it, and then, uh, you know, and actually doing it on, on the playing field. So, um, you know, his ability to do that is, uh, is special, and, and that's what we need. We're going to continue to keep needing those types of efforts. That it's not just about the sack. It's also about creating a turnover. Speaking of a turnover, Ryan Poole continues to improve in all those categories, including interceptions. He does. You know, Ryan has quietly been a player that, you know, we'll, we'll take on their best player. You know, they'll, they'll go three by one to the field, put a one-on-one -on -one into the boundary. He'll do that. They'll put the formation into the boundary, put a guy to the field. He'll go out there and cover that guy. So, and, it, you know, he does a great job versus the pass, but he also has a couple of tackles and cost fumble situations that he did because he was involved in the run game as well. So Ryan has been a, a quiet surprise, but uh, not not a surprise in terms of, his skill set or the level of his uh, ability. Coach, I've done a little research this week. Villanova is the number one team in the league uh, uh, defense, particularly stopping that run. The Tribe, oh, by the way, is the number one team in the league in rushing the football. Is it as easy as that for this week's game against the fourth-ranked team in the country? Well, obviously, you try to take your strengths and you uh, you implement it into your game plan. And, you know, there's no, no secret that, you know, that the strength of our team is being able to run the ball. And so we're going to, we're going to do that. And, and until such time that we have to do something different, um, the ability for us now to also play their offense on the other side, be they do a good job of what they, what they do offensively with the quarterback and their running backs the running backs are, are very good, very skilled. And so it, it's, it's, it's again, another, another football game that, uh, you know, the team that does what they do best and then the ability to, to do it in a way that's going to add points, extend the clock, extend the chains, you know, all those things are going to be critical. So, uh, you know, we're going to take care of the things we need to do by putting the game plan together. I'm quite sure as they will. Coach, your program on the cusp of getting uh, nationally recognized in the polls. Uh, do you talk to your team about that? Is that important to you at this stage of the season or, or not? 
uh, you know, obviously the human element is, you know, people see it, they read it because people talk about it. But for us, it's about at the end of the season, it's, it's, it's you know, where you are at the end, you know, at the beginning, you know, uh, where we were projected to be. And, you know, that's, that's people talking and, you know, that's opinions. But, you know, you can only prove them wrong or right uh, at the end of the season. And so our focus and goal has been on these games that we play, that we get better as each game goes on. And at the end of the season, you know, talk about where we are. But right now, we're in a position to still be relevant in the CAA uh, by playing a really good team, uh, Villanova, at their place. And so, uh, you know, we're excited about this challenge. So, Villanova this weekend, the fourth-ranked team in the country. They've only lost one game, and that was not in uh, the, the FCS level. Uh, keys to a victory for William & Mary uh, this weekend. Well, again, being able to uh, – be, uh, be productive with what we say is positive for us or strength for us, and that's our run game. The ability to uh, create holes, the ability for our running backs to create those creases and get those extra yardage just based on their skill set. Um, defensively on the other side, I mean, they're a good offense as well. I mean, so be able to, to keep the points down but also minimize their ability to extend their drives. And, uh, again, I'll say it again, I, I believe that the kicking game in terms of particularly the return game about kickoff returns and punt returns, setting the stage for field position. And, and so, you know, we're excited about having a Bronson Yoder or Malachi Emo, you know, returning the balls for us in those situations. And, and that, that's, that, that's critical. And then obviously across the board, limit the turnovers because you see, you know, it, it, it's, it makes it hard when you have multiple turnovers to try to overcome it. Uh, or it makes it hard for a team to try to put points on the board when you keep getting the ball uh, taking it away from them, whether it's interceptions or cause fumbles. So uh, that's, uh, you know, I know that's a, that's a mouthful right there, but uh, yeah, it, like I said, they're a good football team, but you know, we, we believe that we're, you know, we're a good football team as well. And so we look forward to this, this challenge here. It is a one o'clock kick at Villanova on the main line in Philadelphia. If you want to uh, listen to the broadcast, we'll have it to beginning at 1230 on the tribe sports network coach uh, uh, London. Thanks for your time and good luck on Saturday. Thanks, Jay. We're opening the door to better financial services, better experiences, better partnerships, better technology, better communities, and a better future. Everything you know about Colonial Heritage is true. A beautiful golf course with exquisite dining and superb event space. But this is also true. You don't have to live there to play, dine, or celebrate there. So let Colonial Heritage be your host for a round, a meal, or a gathering. It's all true. You don't have to live there to enjoy being there. At Colonial Heritage, golf memberships are available. ColonialHeritageClub.com What does tomorrow look like? That's really up to us. By exploring what's ahead and learning from where we've been, we find ways to care and teach ourselves and others how to heal so that we can make life better by design. Welcome back to Tribe Talk presented by Truist. This is Jay Colley and with us is Sydney Wagner, outstanding guard for the women's basketball team at William & Mary. And first of all, Sydney, thanks for joining us. And the softball question is, are you uh, excited about the upcoming season? Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And of course, I'm excited. You know, we had our first scrimmage this weekend and it, it showed us a lot. And 
I'm really excited. We have a lot of new faces and a lot of potential on this team. So super excited. Want to get to those new faces in a minute, but I was looking over some of your statistics last year and, and I'll be in an abbreviated season, but 38 plus minutes a game. Do you think you can handle that kind of activity during a full season? Is that a concern for you? Um, no, I, I don't think that is a concern. I think I, I can handle it. I think um, last year was a, a, a good test for me because uh, the previous year I obviously wasn't playing that many minutes, but I think I think I can handle it. And I think the players who have come in um, are definitely going to help support support me in that and, and be there to kind of maybe give me give me more of a breather this year. I don't want to put you on the spot, but you mentioned your teammates and clearly you want to talk about them. Give us some names. Uh, what can we expect out of this year's uh, team and particularly those newcomers, uh, a couple of the young ladies from the Ivy League? Yeah, yeah. So to, to carry off what you were saying, the two newcomers are transfers that came in from both Cornell and Columbia are going to have huge impacts on this team, I, I believe. Um, that's Kate uh, Ceramic and then Riley Casey. And then both of them are two guards. Both can shoot the ball really well. Both can pass the ball really well. So they're, I believe, are going to have an immediate impact and be super um, active on the offensive end. And uh, I'm just really excited to kind of see their production and see how far we grow as a team with, with them and our backcourt. Coach Swanson's team is always uh, tenacious, uh, if you will. They uh, uh, have played tr tremendous defense over over the years. Is a little early to, to to ask you about the uh, you know the signature of, of this team, but what do you, what are you feeling in preseason practice? Yeah, no, I, I'm thinking that we have a lot of people who can score the ball. Um, we're very talented on the offensive end, so I'm super excited about that because especially last year we weren't as talented and diverse on the offensive end. So I think to look for, for the upcoming season is just a lot of people who, who will be able to score the ball. Um, I think defensively probably won't be as strong as our offensive game, but I think uh, we have plenty of pieces in place to be successful on the defensive end as well. So I'm excited. There's an old uh, adage about uh, sneaking up on people. Well, Sidney Wagner is not going to be able to sneak up on people this year. You're going to be the focus of, of the defensive game plan for the opposition. How are you going to handle that? Yeah, um, I think I'll just basically handle it how I did last year. I think um, I kind of understood my role really well, especially towards the end of the season. So I think I'm going to kind of bounce back up on what I did last year. And I think, like I mentioned, we're going to have a lot of different offensive threats. So I think – that'll definitely open the floor a lot more, you know, having different people who can score the ball. So not as many eyes will be on me the whole game, which, which is exciting. I understand uh, you, you actually had a scrimmage uh, uh, recently. How did that go? And, and uh, what can we expect? Yeah, um, I think it went okay. I think it was as expected as our first scrimmage would go, um, especially with all the new faces. But I think basically from the scrimmage, what I got is we have a lot of potential. Um, yes, we have a long way to go, but I think, we've came a long way. So I'm super excited to kind of see where else the progress takes us. Um, and as long as we keep playing, playing together as a team, I think the sky's the limit for this team. Okay. But uh, you've got other activities as well. And we talked a little bit about that uh, before the interview, you are in the very difficult uh, world-class Mason school of business MBA program. Where are you in that? And are you, uh, have you made the decision yet? What do you want to specify in? Yeah, so the NBA program here has been great. Um, I also am in it with Riley and Kate, my teammates, and it's been a great experience all around. Um, I highly recommend it for anybody who is looking to go into graduate school. Um, we're actually in a week right now. It's called Sprint Week. So basically we have a business and they come in and they give us a problem and we have to kind of solve it and present it to the business. It's been, it's been great. It's been a great experience. What do you think you want to do with that degree uh, at the end of your career here? Yeah, so I'm looking to concentrate in supply chain management. So after school, I'm kind of looking to go into that kind of field, like project management, um, some type of avenue in that in that aspect. Well, hey, basketball should help you. I mean, this is a project. You know, the tribe trying to to, to uh, do something they've never done before in women's basketball and get get, get to that NCAA tournament. Uh, do you do you and your teammates talk about that this early in the season, or is it you want to take it one game at a time? Oh yeah, no, we we've definitely talked about it. I remember the athletic director came into the practice and he was like, "What's one thing that I should know about the program?" And I was like, "That we're going to win the championship this year." So it's definitely in all of our minds like obviously yes we're taking it one day by day but I think um 
we really do have a potential to go as far as we want to go. So I'm excited. I'm obviously always going to be thinking about it because that's my goal. I, I got two years left. So um, hoping to win one at least. Yeah, that's a great goal. Sydney Wagner, outstanding uh, basketball player at William & Mary, um, a real leader. I mean, I guess one of my final questions to you today would be, how was the off season? Because you blossomed so much and I, you know, maybe you didn't come out of nowhere to, to your, in your mind, but to the world you did. So how was your off season and how, how are you handling the pats on the back and the accolades that are, that are coming your way? Yeah, no, I think, I think the off season has been huge, not only for me individually, but for my teammates, a lot of us have really taken our games, I would say to the next level. So I think for me, what, what I kind of have been looking to do is just, being able to stay consistent and and stay consistent from especially my numbers last year and kind of bring that to the to the year to this year and kind of do what the team needs me to do, um, whether that's scoring a little less so other people have the opportunity to score more or um, even rebounding more. I think that's going to be huge for me this year because our team's a little smaller. So just doing what the team needs for me, honestly, um, and I'm excited to see to see where the where the, the season goes. We can feel the energy on the screen. Thank you very much for being our guest on Tribe Talk today, Sydney, and good luck to you and your teammates as we uh, roll towards the uh, season opener uh, here pretty soon. Awesome. Thank you so much. If these times have taught us anything, it's that anything is possible, especially at our public schools. Overcoming great adversity, we salute our teachers and students who brought their A game every day. Whatever tomorrow brings, our commitment to public schools is stronger than ever. A win for education. The Virginia Lottery. $11 billion to Virginia's public schools since 1999. Fun fact, you know Mountain Dew and spicy chicken is the perfect combo? Does it look like I don't know that? Okay. Didn't mean to ruffle your feathers. You know, we both did the employee training, Gary. Okay, don't jump down my beak. <laughs> Doing spicy. Do the do. We're opening the door to better financial services, better experiences, better partnerships, better technology. better communities and a better future. We are Growth for Virginia, a grassroots campaign bringing together students, parents, employers, and educators. We believe talent is what sets Virginia apart. We believe in providing all Virginians affordable pathways from learning to earning. We believe innovation and investment in our standout higher education system can make Virginia America's talent leader. Together, we're asking our leaders to make transformational investments in our future and a stronger Virginia. The William and Mary Student Athlete of the Week, presented by the Virginia Lottery, recognizes tribe student athletes for their standout efforts in competition, the classroom, and the community. This week's William and Mary Student Athlete of the Week is football junior running back Donovan Lester. Lester was voted this week's award winner by the William and Mary fan base via social media polls on both the at Tribe Athletics Twitter and Instagram accounts. Men's soccer player Alexander Levengood, women's swimmer Missy Cundiff, and women's tennis player Mila Sarek were also finalists for the award. Lester highlighted a dominant performance by the Tribe's rushing attack as he posted a team-high 99 rushing yards on 13 carries with a career-high three TDs. He ranks among the conference's top 10 in rushing yards per game and rushing touchdowns. An outstanding student, Lester is majoring in business and has earned CA Commissioner's Academic Honor Roll every year of his career.
my neighborhood. Everything you know about colonial heritage is true. A beautiful golf course with exquisite dining and superb event space. But this is also true. You don't have to live there to play, dine, or celebrate there. So let Colonial Heritage be your host for a round, a meal, or a gathering. It's all true. You don't have to live there to enjoy being there. At Colonial Heritage, golf memberships are available. ColonialHeritageClub.com We're opening the door. What does Better tomorrow financial look like? services. That's really up to us. Better experiences. By exploring what's ahead and Better learning from where we've been, we find ways to care Better and technology. teach ourselves and others how to heal. Better communities. So that we can make life better. A better future. By design. At William & Mary, we strive to be more than we are and to do more than we've ever done. Here, we do not live in the shadows of the giants of American history that we helped to shape. We stand on their shoulders, reaching higher, looking further, and leading the way forward. To be a place where history happens every day, and to be a university for the bold. Welcome back to Tribe Talk, presented by Truist. With us is the head men's and women's cross-country coach at William & Mary, Forrest Braden. And first of all, Forrest, thanks for, uh, so much for your time today, and, and you have been uh, uh, at the helm here at William & Mary in your fifth year. Uh, thanks for your time today. Oh, absolutely. I'm really happy to be here, Jay. I appreciate it. So tell us a little bit about the program. It is the most decorated uh, sports program at William & Mary, a pretty phenomenal uh, program at cross-country. Well, it's, it's been fun to, you know, be a part of that. And, you know, it's something that, uh, you know, when I was over on the West Coast, I, I knew about William & Mary when I was running against William & Mary at the national championships um, as an athlete, when I was coaching against uh, William & Mary at the national championships as a coach. Um, and so it's one of those programs that I've known for, for a long, long time, even though, you know, I was born and raised in Idaho and and did a lot of my coaching on the West, on, on the West coast. I I've, I've heard of million, William and Mary for years and years. And it's just a special thing to be a part of that tradition. Yeah. Getting back to the West coast, you're a Bronco, a Boise state guy that uh, had some championships yourself. So uh, clearly you've been part of this sport since what uh, early, your early life. Yeah. It's getting on half my life now or, or probably, probably more than that now. But um, I started running at a young age and just really loved you know, just, just pushing yourself and trying to be the best you can be. And then, and then, you know, with cross country being a, being a part of a team and trying to get that um, done as a team as well, you know, it's just something I've, I've always en enjoyed the sport and had some really good mentors who have helped to teach me the love of, of, of the sport and get to know the sport so much better. Let's talk about the women first. Uh, uh, Kara Holland is having a really good year. Matter of fact, she was voted William Mary student athlete of the week. Uh, presented by the Virginia Lottery uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, tell us about the, the women's side. Yeah, well, you know, uh, Scott Jones uh, works primarily with the women, but we, uh, you know, we uh, see each other often and, and uh, work closely together with both programs. And uh, Kira is just one of those athletes who always, <laughs> she puts so much time and effort into being the best that she can be. Um, she cares really deeply about the team success and her own personal success and just done a, a good job kind of transitioning from a good freshman to, um, you know, a better sophomore. And she's going to continue to, to progress. And, and uh, through, through this year, this track season and through her career, she's going to do some very special things here. And she's definitely one of the front runners in the, in the CAA right now. She's, she's one of the best. And, you know, I know she's got um, high goals for herself and, and coach Jones has um, prepared her really well. Ariana DeBoer, also an uh, outstanding uh, athlete for the cross-country team. Yes, and Ariana, a freshman, a true freshman for us, um, out of uh, the Charlottesville area, so fairly local. Um, just a really good, positive attitude, hard-working athlete. Uh, I know she's a joy to be around as a coach. Um, I know she's a great teammate, and she's got a chance to really, I think, surprise the CAA 
um, this Saturday. Um, she, she could really do some special things. So it's going to be fun to kind of see that one, two punch, uh, of Kira and Ariana up there and just, just see them work together and see what they can do. Before we talk about uh, the men's side, you give a, give the, the, the listeners tribe fans some idea of how you prepare for championships in preparation for, for Saturday's championships. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're still training and we're training at a good level, but we're definitely, um, peaking a bit, starting to peak for this championship. We've got the, this, the conference championship. And then two weeks later, we have the regional meet. So we're really looking at both of those as our championship meets. And so now we're starting to, to wind down, you know, as, as far as, um, the, the, the volume of training, we're still hitting some intensity, um, but it is a, a different style of training. Once we get into championship week, you know, it's really more about making sure that, you know, we're feeling good, we're healthy, we're, we're, um, we're really ready to go going into the meet. Um, the hay is almost in the barn, as, as they say. Um, not quite. There's still some things we can do, but it's, it's getting pretty close. Uh, how about the junior uh, Jacob Jones? Boy, what a year he's having. He's been a great addition to the team. The positivity, his mentality has been so good. You know, you never know with, a, with you know, transfer kid coming in. He wasn't able to, to, uh, to uh, you know, have the recruiting experience, really meet the guys or anything before he came in. I had some really good conversations with him, but he's just been phenomenal. He's been outstanding. Um, he has been so far on paper, the best, the best guy in the conference. And, um, we feel really good about having him, uh, just where his training's at. And, um, he's a great teammate and that's really important to us, obviously. Sam Pritchard, uh, another young man, I know that'll be, uh, important on, uh, at the championships. Sam has really progressed from this year, from last year to this year He's a true freshman last year. Um, obviously with, with the, with the COVID year and, you know, all the weird weirdness that came with that, um, he was able to get some experience while still saving his eligibility. So he's, he's really a, a, a still a, a freshman um, and he has progressed really well. He's been Mr. Consistent for us. Um, he's been right there on Jacob Jones's heels. Most of the way he's been our, our second or third man, every race. It's just been, he's been Mr. Consistent. And I've really appreciated that to have somebody that steady is, is really nice. It's it, as a coach, you want to have that, that, that Mr. Consistent, Mr. Steady right there. Final question. As you go out recruiting uh, these young men and women to uh, your, your program, what are you telling them about uh, William and Mary and the opportunities to really succeed here at cross country? Yeah. Well, I mean, we've done it. We've done it before. We've done it before. Um, we're continuing to do it. And um, if you want to be a part of a, a special team, you know, it's all about culture. It's about bringing the right people in the right athletes, the right students. And, you know, we want to get the best kids from Virginia and around the country um, to come in here and help us uh, help us to continue to do big things. Forrest Braden, Coach Forrest Braden, uh, the head uh, cross country coach at William & Mary, both men and women. Thanks for your time and good luck this weekend. Absolutely. Thank you so much. 